Hello guys, welcome back to Engineers Academy. Do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time. Now we are going to solve this problem which says that determine the average normal stress in each of 20 mm diameter bars of the truss set P equals to 40 kN. So this force P is given which is 40 kN and we are asked to find the average normal stress in each of the member of this given truss. So this P force is equal to 40 kN. So what we need to do is that we need to find the forces in each of these members and that will be the normal forces because this is, this is the truss and the, all of these members are subjected to only two forces, right? So all of these are two force members. So for that, first of all, I will consider this joint C. So for joint C, let's say, let me cut um, this member and let me cut this member. So we will have this member, let's say that the mem the force in this FBC is in this direction, let's say this is FBC and let's say we have the force in this member is in the downward direction, let's say this is FAC. So if this is the case, if FBC is acting towards the joint, this means that this BC member is in compression we are considering that this BC member is in compression and if FAC is acting away from this joint C this means that FAC member is in tension and we are given that this is 2 meters this is 1.5 meters so what will be the length of this BC so we can find the length of BC by applying the Pythagoras theorem so we can say that since BC is the hypotenuse this is a right angle triangle so we can say that BC will be equal to 2 square plus we can say this will be 2 square plus 1.5 square. This gives us 5 divided by 2, which is 2.5. So the length of this BC member is, we can say, 2.5 meters. So now let's say that this FBC is making some angle theta with the horizontal. Or we can say that it is making some angle theta with the vertical, let's say. If we are considering this angle theta here, and then we... We, we can apply the sum of the force in the x for joint C. So if we are considering joint C, then we can apply the sum of the forces in the x. That must be equal to 0 towards the right is our positive x. Now we can resolve this FBC into its components, right? So we can have, we will have one component in this direction and one component in this direction. So this component will be the sine component if you are considering this angle, right? So this component, the vertical component, this is the cos component, this one is the sine component. So we can say that the sine component of FBC is in the negative x and P is in the positive x. So we will write that minus FBC cos of the, uh, sine of theta. Let me show the components. We will have FBC component one, one will be in this direction and one will be in this direction. So this, this vertical component, since the angle is made with the vertical, since the angle is made with the vertical, then this one will be the cos component, this one will be the sine component. So we can say that FBC sine of theta plus that force P, which is 40 kilonewton, is equal to zero. And now from this triangle, we can say, we can find sine of theta, right? So the triangle is, for this triangle, sine of theta will be this perpendicular divided by hypotenuse. For this angle theta, this will be the perpendicular and this will be the hypotenuse. So 2 divided by 2.5 will be sine of theta. So we can say that minus FBC 2 divided by 2.5, we can take that 40 to the other side. So this will cancel out and we can say that FBC is equal to 40 into 2.5 divided by 2. So we can say that FBC is 40 multiplied by 2.5 divided by 2. This gives us 50. So FBC, the force in BC member is 50 kilonewton. And since we got the positive signs, this means that the assumed direction for FBC is accurate. This means that if FBC is acting towards the joint, this FBC, this is the force of BC member on that joint C. 
So is a reaction that joint C will apply the opposite force on BC member. So this means that if this is that BC member, then the force on BC is in this direction. So this means that BC member is in compression. So we can say that BC is in compression and the average normal stress on that member BC will be the compressive stress. Similarly, if we apply the sum of the forces in the Y, that must be equal to zero at joint C, upward direction is considered to be positive. Now we have this cost component of FBC. So we will have plus FBC cos of theta. And we have this blue force, which is the force in member AC, which is acting in the downward direction. So we will say minus FAC, this is equal to zero. And from this, we can say that minus FAC is equal to minus FBC cos of theta. Minus will cancel out if you multiply both sides with minus. So we can say that FAC is equal to FBC. So now FBC magnitude is known, which is 50. Cos of theta, so cos of theta from this triangle is now, so this will be the base, this will be the hypotenuse. So for this angle theta, this is the base, this is the hypotenuse, which is 1.5 divided by 2.5. So 50 into 1.5 divided by 2.5, this gives us 30. So FAC is equal to 30 kilonewton. And this is again, we got the positive sign. This means that FAC is in tension. If the force of FAC on that joint C is acting away from the joint, this means that the joint is applying the opposite force. So this means that AC member is in tension. So we can say that this is the, this will give us the tensile stress. Similarly, to find the force in link AB, we must consider that joint B. We can consider joint A, but at joint A, we will have two support reactions. So at B, we have the roller support, so we will have only one force. Let's say this is BY. So we can simply consider that joint B for our analysis, right? So let's say if I cut this, this link AB, then we will have the forces at joint B. So now at joint B, we know that link BC is in compression. So FBC must act in the opposite direction here. The force of FBC must be towards the, towards the joint. B as well, right? So this is FBC. We know that this is now 50 kilonewton. And let's say that FAB is in tension, let's say. This FAB is, let's say, in tension. And now let's say that FBC is making angle theta here now. Let's say this is the F theta. So now again for joint B, we can say that for We can apply the sum of the forces in the X. So the sum of the forces in the X must be equals to zero. Towards the right is our positive X. Now we can resolve this FBC into its components as well. So we will have one component of FBC in this direction and we will have one component of FBC in the downward direction. So we can say that FAB is in the negative x because towards the right is our positive x. So we can say that minus FAB and since FBC is now making angle with the horizontal, then this horizontal component will be the cost component. So we can say that plus FBC cos of theta. We know FBC which is 50 and now from this triangle, cos of theta will be, if this is theta, then for this angle theta, this is the base. So cos of theta will be the base divided by hypotenuse. So for this angle theta, this is the base, this is the hypotenuse. So 2 divided by 2.5 is the cos theta. So 2 divided by 2.5, this is equal to 0. And from this, we can say that FAB minus FAB is equal to minus 50 into 2 divided by 2.5. Minus will cancel out and we will have 50 
multiply by 2 divided by 2.5. This gives us 40. So FAB is equal to 40 kilonewtons. Since we got the positive sign, this means that FAB is again in tension because the force of FAB on joint B is away from that joint B. So as a reaction, that joint B will apply the force on FAB in this direction. And if this is the case, if the force is in this direction, then uh, member AB is in tension. So we can say that FAB, this is the tension force. And FAB will be in tensile stress. So now to find the average stresses, we can say average normal stresses in each member. So we can say that the stress in member AB will be equal to FAB divided by the area of AB. But as you guys can see that each of the member is having 20 mm diameter. So the area of all the members is the same. So we must find the area. Or we can say that the area will be equal to pi divided by 4 and 20 mm. So 20 divided by 1000 is 0 0.02. So 0, 0 0.02 square. So this will be the area of each and every member, right? So now we know FAB 40 kilonewton, right? So we will write that this is 40 kilo is 10 raised to power 3 divided by that area which is pi divided by 4 into 0 0.02 square. So we have 40 in the numerator. So this is equal to we can say that the normal stress is member AB is 1, 2, 7, 3, 2, 4 or we can say 3, 2, 3.9 into 10 raised to power 3 and this is Newton per meter square is Pascal. And similarly, if we shift this decimal place three digits towards the left, then this will be 127.32 into 10 to the power 3. So we can say that this will be, uh, let me write it here, we can say that this will be 127.3 into 10 to the power 3. And similarly, 10 to the power 3 into 10 to the power 3 will become 10 to the power 6. So this is mega Pascal, right? So we can say, 127.3 megapascal and as we know that FAB is in tension so this means that this is the tensile stress this is the tensile normal stress or we can say tensile stress similarly if you want to find the stress in member BC so we can say sigma BC will be equal to FBC divided by the area of BC which will remain the same because all the members have the same area. So FBC is, we know that this is 50 kilo, right? So 15 to 10 raised to power 3 divided by the same area, which is pi divided by 4 into 0 0.02 square. So now this is, we can say this is 50, right? So 50, this is 159154.9. So we can say that sigma BC one five nine one five four point nine into ten to the power three Pascal and similarly again if we shift this decimal place to one five nine point one five then this will become mega right so we can say that this is one five nine mega Pascal let me write this is 127 megapascal right so this is 127 megapascal and again uh, member bc is in compression right so this means that this is the compressive stress right so we can say this is compressive stress similarly if you want to find the stresses the stress in member ac so that will be st stress ac this will be equal to fac divided by that same area because all the members have the same area. Now FAC is 30 kilonewtons. So we will say 30 into 10 raised to the power 3 area will remain the same pi divided by 4 0 0.02 square. So now we will have 30 here 
which is 95492.96. So this is 95492.96. This will be 10 raised to power 3 Pascal. And similarly, again, if we shift the decimal place 3 digits to the left, then this will be 95. 0.5 megapascal right so let me write it is and again we know that the force in member ac is the tension force right so if ac is in tension so this means that this is the tensile stress as well so this is the solution of this particular problem right this is the stress in member ab this is the stress in member BC and this is the stress in member AC. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Let me know in the comments if this helps. Do subscribe Ingenious Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibler.